intestinal obstruction so bowels cannot work properly because of the narrowing because of the obstruction you need to find out the reason what's happening so the main cause that patient will come to you with uh, it, it, it's going to be abdominal pain abdominal pain sometimes they're going to come with constipation so they have got abdominal pain they have got constipation ask are they able to pass wind or not that's really important is it constipation or is it obstipation complete obstruction so when you're not able to pass things from down there, it will come from here. Nausea, vomiting, very important. Bloating, that is what you can ask, right? So change in the bowel habits, that is what you can ask. Urine, if they're able to pass. So the thing is, ask, because they have got nausea, vomiting, vom they're vomiting things. So you need to ask for dehydration symptoms as well. You ask symptoms here for dehydration and later on, you mention for dehydration in, in terms of vitals in, in examination as well. Right. So uh, what are the things that we need to uh, cover here? If patient has got instead of obstruction, the reason could be infection. So just uh, uh, cover that uh, clearly. Uh, and uh, pancreatitis, that could be one of the reason because uh, in pancreatitis, what's going to happen? Patient will have a severe pain in the tummy that is going to the back. So that can be one of your differential. Perforation, obviously, then in perforation, obviously, patient is going to be very severely sick. I mean, a systemically ill patient you will have. And also because of the phrenic now, patient might have uh, shoulder tick pain as well. Okay, so these are some of your uh, important differentials that you can uh, do. Uh, smoking, alcohol, diet, family history, psychosocial history is very, very important. Now, you have to go for general physical examination. You're checking the vitals of the patient and you're doing the abdominal examination. When you do the abdominal examination, obviously, patient may have like severe pain and it's very much bloated. It's very hard to tell me that is what you're going to see if you are dealing with a case of uh, uh, intestinal obstruction. Now, you do full blood count, liver function, kidney function test you can do. Now, we want you to do a chest x-ray as well and an abdominal x-ray. Gas under diaphragm, that's what you will see in intestinal obstruction. That will be really, really important. And you know, once we're done with that, actually, we go for a CT scan as well. CT scan as well. But first, x ray, definitely mention x ray because you know, when you don't mention particular examination or you don't mention particular investigation, you may not get the findings from them. So if you mention, you may get it. So you need to be extra careful on these points. Yeah. Okay. And what's the treatment? Uh, uh, it's obstruction. So uh, if it is a complicated case, ischemia has happened, perforation has happened, infection, peritonitis has happened. You have to go for a surgical resection or laparotomy. You have to do open laparotomy. But if it is uncomplicated case, and uh, maybe you can try conservative management as well. So you can put an NG tube uh, for dehydration, uh, we go for IV fluids because they're keeping NPO, putting NG tube for decompression, and uh, uh, we're giving IV fluids to the patient. We have to give rest to the bowel. So sometimes you can manage the case there. But if you see it's complicated scenario, you have got ischemia, it's perforated, obviously, then you don't have any other solution. Peritonitis infection is there. So definitely, definitely, you have to go for laparotomy. Obviously, we're going to give uh, antibiotics as well. Make sure you're giving... Uh, uh, leads to the patient as well right and obviously follow up and warning sign follow up and warning sign if you're keeping the patient in the hospital and you're going for uncomplicated uh, management like uh, ng tube uh, intestinal decompression iv fluids power rest but tell the patient if you get severe pain you're having severe nausea vomiting please let us know so that could be your uh, warning sign to this patient so that is something that you need to do if you get a case on intestinal obstruction okay so again, eyes, check and check, summarize, acknowledgement, signposting, active listening, leaflets, all these things are very, very, very important. Is it serious? Uh, it can be manageable. If not treated, it can be serious as well, right? So that's how you can answer all these questions which your patient might ask you in these scenarios. All right.